Hello, Swansea. How are you? I'm so excited. I'm on TV. Um, <laughs> I've done radio. I did radio recently. Um, they called me in to talk about the Madonna adoption fiasco, because whenever anything happens that's deemed to be black, they round a few of us up and give us a microphone <laughs> and go say something. I'm just standing there going, I don't know. Uh, I agreed with the adoption, because um, I think Madonna's doing a lot for the country, because when she got David, she donated 1.5 million to the orphanage he came from. And then other people criticise that and say, well, what she's actually done is gone to Africa and buy a black child for £1.5 million. And someone said to me, surely you find that offensive? I was like, not really. I find it exciting because I've got two black kids at home. <laughs> I can't lie to you. I skipped home that day. I was like, kids, you need to get your coats on. <laughs> And their faces lit up. They're so excited. They're like, ooh, mummy, where are we going? I was like, I don't know, but with a street value of 1.5 million each, you're not staying in my house. <laughs> so that's cruel. I'm joking. I really am. If you've met my kids, you'd realise that's a joke, because they are not worth that. <laughs> I'm not one of those parents that lies. My children disgust me. Um, <laughs> Especially, uh, more my daughter. My daughter's 14 years old now. Has anyone else here got teenage children? Yes. <laughs> Do you hear that lack of enthusiasm? Because <laughs> yeah. it is, it's like, you know, you get a little baby, you take it home, and it's so sweet, and you forget it grows. And <laughs> I feel like my daughter tricked me into keeping her. <laughs> because when she was little, she was so cute, and it's like she woke up on her 13th birthday and somehow got an attitude overnight. <laughs> Like, everything that she does is over the top. And she came in at the end of last term, she kicked open the front door and she was crying her eyes out. And I was really alarmed. I went, oh my God, what's wrong? She went, I hate my whole life. And I went, well, why? And she went, because I'm fat. <laughs> I went, well, yeah. Um, <laughs> so could you at least have the common decency to be jolly? not just me, she's starting to get in trouble at school. And I was called into her school because she graffitied another child's exercise book. And what she wrote on this book was, Lucy is an asshole." <laughs> I know, my firstborn, I was so proud. And I don't like getting called to see my kids' teachers, OK? I don't know if we've got any teachers here at all. Any teachers? Oh, you're a teacher? Oh, well, I don't like you. And... <laughs> have problems with teachers. I wasn't great at school myself. My dad actually sent me off to boarding school. They were sick of it. And he sent me to a prep school in a place called Haywards Heath in West Sussex. Does anyone know it? Yeah. It's nice around there, isn't it? It's quite villagey, it's quite posh, it's quite picturesque, and it's slightly racist, but, um, <laughs> but in the nicest possible way. I've never suffered such classy racism in my entire life. Because my cousins grew up in East London. They'd tell me they'd walk down the street and people would shout stuff at them, like, you know, go back to where you come from. I never heard that in Haywards Heath. It was more like, return from whence you came. <laughs> You've got to respect manners, really. Um, so I'm called to see this teacher, and teachers make me nervous, and when I get nervous, I start laughing. So she's shown me what my daughter's written, and I'm on the floor absolutely wetting myself. Right? <laughs> and she went, do you think this is funny? I said, well, clearly. Um, <laughs> blame the parents. She goes, oh, don't you think it's your job as a mother to stop her doing this kind of thing? And I went, but she's written Lucy's an asshole, and she spelt it A-S-S-H-O-L-E, and that's an Americanism, so let's not talk about who can't do their job properly. <laughs> uh, I, I had quite an interesting experience recently um, surrounding that whole uh, gollywog Carol Thatcher scandal thing, because uh, I wrote an article in The Independent about it, and basically the gist of the article was, I don't want to be called a gollywog. <laughs> and you know people slag racists off and say there's nothing good about them? I have to defend them in, just 
just for now, because when I said I didn't want to be called a gollywog, some of these people actually sat down and took their time to email me alternatives. <laughs> some of them were quite inventive. Some guy called me a she-coon. <laughs> Is that outrageous? And then this other guy goes, if you don't want to be called a gollywog, why don't you call yourself a niggerette? <laughs> and that's the one that puzzled me, because I had no idea that niggerette was a racial slur. I thought, right, that a niggerette was something, like a patch that you would stick <laughs> on the arm of a black man to wean him off white women. <laughs> I, uh... um, I have to go now. I think I, think I should stop talking. <laughs> Listen, you guys, thank you very, very much for listening. I'm having a doubt.